Hey everyone, I hope you all are having a great day and today I'll be reviewing Wild Card by Marie Lu, which is the sequel to Warcross, which I reviewed sometime last year maybe? I don't know, I definitely have a review up for it on my channel so I'll link it down in the pants in case you want to check it out. This series is a science fiction series set in the near future where virtual reality has become super commonplace and there's an annual tournament for a really popular video game called Warcross. And of course our main character ends up getting roped into this competition, but when you get to the end of the first book you realize that the stakes are a lot different than what you initially thought they were. <laughs> and that is my non-spoiler way of describing the first book. I admittedly wasn't a huge fan of Warcross, the first book, but I really, really did enjoy the ending, especially the way it kind of reframed the entire purpose of the story. And the ending of the first book is essentially why I wanted to continue on reading the series. If you've read Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell, Kath describes creative writing as falling and you invent the branches as you fall. And Marie Lu invented her branches but she invented them so irregularly and at such an odd pace. This book read like Marie Lu was trying to figure out the story as she was writing it. And you know, that's how I write most of my college essays, so that's relatable, but it ends up being a sequel that's kind of stiff and boring. The pace was just really off for me. Like, the climax felt like it was so extended. It lasted so long. I think I ended up skimming, like, the last quarter of the book just because I wanted to figure out how it ended. The characters also seemed kind of lackluster. Emika just felt like a shadow of a character. It's really hard to say that she ever propelled the plot forward because it kind of just felt like things happened to her. In Wildcard, the rules of the world that we're in also get kind of murky. I remember when I was reading Warcross, I thought the world was so cool, so innovative and inventive and imaginative, but in the sequel, things were ramped up and changed so much that I didn't even know the rules of the system anymore. Like, I don't know what's impossible or possible in this world, which makes the plot kind of frustrating sometimes. We don't even really have a concrete enemy throughout the book. Who the enemy is kind of keeps on shifting. And in some books, it's like, oh, twists and turns, that's exciting. But in this book, I kind of just felt like unstable plot. That being said, there are some huge surprises in store. There are some things that I just did not see coming. And kind of like in Warcross, Marie Lu really, really raises the stakes in Wildcard way higher than you ever would have thought they'd be. I do have to give credit to Marie Lu because in this book she is constantly pushing the limits of her world, so that was kind of interesting. To be completely honest, I am disappointed in the sequel. And when books are just meh, those are the hardest books to review because you don't have a lot of things to gush about, but you also don't have like a roast prepared. So that's essentially all I have to say about Wildcard. I'm going to go into a super quick spoiler section, so if you haven't read this book and you don't want to be spoiled, I'd advise leaving in three, two, one, goodbye. Honestly, best thing about Wildcard was Jax. Her character was great. She didn't have a ton of screen time, but she still saved Emika's butt like 50 billion times. And in addition to that, she also had a great backstory and wonderful emotional depth. Yes, I am here for Jax. When we found out that Zero was not real, I was like, what is going on here? I just didn't get it. I still don't get it. I don't get this idea of how you can download a human's brain as data and insert it into an AI body. Like, what? <laughs> this book and its technology just got so so outlandish for me at times that I was sitting there like, what am I reading? This is supposed to happen in the near future? I was like, what in the world is even going on? I just couldn't discern the rules of the world. Like anytime Emika did anything, I was like, isn't it possible that Taylor's just watching you doing this? Anytime she sent a message to any of her teammates, anytime she shared, you know, a file with anybody, couldn't that all be tracked? Like I was under the impression that Taylor and zero, they could access or hack anything at all. So like, there's absolutely no security or privacy, right? I don't know. There were so many things that I just did not understand. And I honestly cannot believe that Emika became CEO. Like, especially after reading this book. In Wildcard, does Emika make any decisions for herself? Does she have what it takes to be a CEO? And not even just a CEO, but the CEO of possibly the most powerful company in the world. I do this a lot, but I love to compare authors' books to other books by that exact same author. So if this were June from the Legend trilogy, you know, I wouldn't even bat an eyelash. I'd be like, yeah, June's got this. But Emika? 
I don't know, man. I would love to hear your thoughts on Wildcard if you have read it. I was not super pleased. I kind of just kept reading because I just wanted closure. But I'd love to hear whether you loved it or you hated it or you fell somewhere in between. Thanks so much for watching. I hope y'all have a fantastic day and happy reading. Bye.